Hi, today I'll show you how to create design process animation. The one that got me viral video on TikTok and now it has over 4 million views. They're still performing very well. So I'll show you exactly how I make them. First, let's go to Clo and open our project file, the garment you want to simulate and record. Um, I did my texturing in Substance Painter actually, so it I left all the fabrics white. So just for this video, I've added some different colors for the fabrics, changed the type uh, to fabric silk satin just to give some shine and make it a bit more interesting. Also, uh, you can change the background, the click format 3D background just here. And then you can either choose solid color. So any color you like, maybe not this one, <laughs> not the bright red. Um, yeah, and it will change. Or you can choose picture or texture fill. Uh, click just here and here I default glow different ones and I made a couple of custom ones um, with this gradient because I really liked it. I can show you in another tutorial how to do that in Photoshop. So I'll just click that and okay. So we have our project file. Now we have to go layer by layer rewind the whole design process and remember where our design process have started so for me for this outfit i know that it would make the most sense to start with the top so what do i do i need to deactivate and hide all the other patterns so i select them all and then right click and we choose deactivate pattern and sewing and also hide 3D pattern. And I forgot to do these sleeves, I'll do them as well. So just the same process, hide. Now for the, for the top, there is a couple of ways we can do that. Um, we can just select all the pattern pieces and in 3D window, select reset to do to the arrangement. And then we just kind of manually place them where we want. So I'll just quickly, I think I'll have to speed up this process because otherwise this tutorial will take literally ages. And now I'm happy. So I'm ready to simulate and record this. However, I know that I have some settings that I won't like. So I have the shrinkage weft and wrap at 95%. So I'll just do 100 for the simulation because otherwise it will look weird in the simulation so now we're gonna go to obs studio that's a free software you can download download it online it's great once we hear the default is the size just go to settings video and invert this scaled aspect ratio here I can't do that because I'm recording it at the minute. So I can just go to profile, click on this and then just scale it. So it matches. I also like to scale as much as I need. So I won't see any like gray edges or anything from here. We're going to press start recording here and then we're gonna go to close 3d and we're gonna press simulate here and the patterns will sew together and they will the animation will be recorded so if you simulate the garment and you don't 
not really happy with the simulation it's a bit glitchy it's not very smooth it's not very nice what you do is you you go back and just reset the 3d and then you can also increase the particle distance to 15 or 20 and then just go back to obs click record set your angle how you like it let's do it like that and then click simulate when it simulates okay i'm happy you just stop the recording come back to clone and we do another layer another garment so we're gonna do trousers now we select all the trouser pieces we click activate and show to the partner now I'll show you another way how you can create this animation. So the first way was to completely reset as in 2D arrangement. You can also, sometimes I do this when I'm not lazy, but sometimes <laughs> it happens. You can just click the garment piece in 3D window and just move it. You know, you don't have to necessarily to completely reset the to, a, to the 3d arrangement so we just move it slightly and it's gonna still give pretty much the same effect slightly different but similar we can make sure there is a couple of gaps so we could see the sewing lines and when we happy usually i rotate and i change the the angles also sometimes i do let's say front and back of the same garment just to give more so when we're happy we go back to obs be happy with this frame we click start recording we click simulate in clow 3d and it simulates and records this animation when it's done we just stop the simulation and then stop recording so when we are happy we just go and do another piece for example this waistband again we're gonna activate we're gonna show 3d pattern we can just move it if you see that it collides with another layer you can always set this to layer one or the other layer to minus one so i'll just set, set this to one you can even doesn't matter how it looks at the back if we're filming the front you know so it can be a bit iffy there let's say i like this we go back to obs we click simulate and it records the animation we stop we can undo this to layer one everything looks fine And we do the rest honestly that's that simple we're gonna do so i usually do one actually one where is the activate i should learn the the shortcuts for the keyboard because it's annoying to be fair so also because I'm using the avatar from Daz, I Daz, <laughs> Daz, I can't use the arrangement points, would be, which would be very useful. 
at the minute so even if I turn them on I can't see them because the avatar is not wait actually I can show with the default avatar maybe let's put her a bit further away add okay so only glow 3d avatars have have the arrangement points why she's I messed up the clearly the we have the avatar if we select the arrangement points then we can click on the pattern and we can just do like that it's actually much more convenient than manually trying to sort them out we can still adjust a little bit so it would not have a huge disaster so imagine if you're having a default glow avatar you can do this option as well and then we choose the pose the angle we want and we go back to obs click record and then simulate yeah so you can do this like that I'm not going to show the rest because it's a bit boring and very repetitive. So now once you recorded everything, we're going to go to another editing software. At the minute, I really enjoy using CapCut, but there is multiple different ones you can use. So now once we are in CapCut, we're going to select new project i don't want to install anything we're gonna click import so once we imported everything we can add to track and it will import pretty much all of them you can just play one of them to see like kind of the speed um Okay, I think I will what I will do is I will adjust the speed and usually I increase that by at least two. Now zoom zoom in the timeline a little bit more so it would be easier. And now the tedious part is editing every single one. So basically we want to start playing and see where it actually starts like moving so just we're gonna cut here we're gonna immediately delete this so and then it simulates and when it stops moving we're gonna cut again and delete this part so we have one perfect Boop. good now the second one it goes the same I'll just stop where it starts moving move a couple of frames and then cut and it starts stops moving here so I'll just delete these two and we have two frames that we are happy about good So it's 43 seconds I think it's a bit long for social media but let's just see so let's just click play mm, I think this needs to be shortened I can the pause is too long you just you don't want to be bored you know watching this you want to be excited you want to Keep getting the new thing I think this one might be too long as well okay and this doesn't need to be as long as well you we can just delete this part okay let's 
so we eliminated like 15, 13 seconds which is good you can always speed up and adjust the speed at the in on instagram or tiktok to like really sync with the music with the sound but yeah i'm pretty happy i don't usually really edit anything else so i think that's it that's the that's the end thanks for anyone that stayed with me let me know if you have any other ideas or anything bye